Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Today we have Dr. Ilad Levy. He's a professor at University of Buffalo and also the director of neurovascular and endovascular surgery there. He's going, going to talk to us about controversial and cutting edge um, applications of endovascular techniques in management of aneurysms, ischemic disease, and arteriovenous malformations. Ilad, I want to thank you for being with us, and we're very interested in your expert comments. Aaron, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, in the next hour or so, we're going to review various types of cerebrovascular cases that we've treated with an endovascular approach. What we try to do is present cases that have an interesting twist that may not be treated with standard and accepted uh, techniques and really show you areas where we may be uh, pushing the envelope of endovascular treatment for a multitude of cerebrovascular diseases. So we'll just get right into it and we'll start with the first case. And the first case is of a giant uh, dissecting fusiform aneurysm. This was in a 55-year-old lady with a medical history of hypertension uh, who had no family history of subarachnoid hemorrhage but presented to our facility intubated uh, after a subarachnoid hemorrhage. She was a Hunhess 3 Fisher 4, and here you can see her CAT scan showing the uh, blood pattern, as well here on the CT angiogram, which we routinely get once we see a subarachnoid hemorrhage pattern, demonstrating what appears to be a carotid type of blowout or a fusiform enlargement uh, uh, of this aneurysm. Once we see this, uh, we want to understand more, and we begin our treatment uh, strategies, treatment paradigm. We uh, would entertain clip ligation. However, in such a fusiform dissecting type aneurysm, we feel that that is not optimal and, and really not feasible. And then we also discuss stent coiling or endovascular techniques. However, in the setting of a ruptured aneurysm and subarachnoid hemorrhage, where the patient will likely require ventriculostomy, extensive ICU care uh, with invasive lines, we tend to avoid or try to avoid the use of stents or flow diverters due to the need for plavix. In the setting of plavix, there is an increased risk of, hem increased risk of hemorrhage from a ventricular drain or the lines that need to be placed. But sometimes, again, we have no alternatives. And in these situations, we place the EVD first. We try to place all invasive type of monitoring first, and only then give Plavix to try to minimize uh, hemorrhagic complications. So prior to stenting, we uh, gave effiant uh, and aspirin, and then heparin. Again, at this point, and in most situations, all invasive monitoring would be in. So here you can see uh, the angiogram showing, again, the large carotid fusiform aneurysm. And here you can see uh, we placed a flow diverting stent and one coil in the sac. We sometimes place one coil to dampen uh, the inflow into the aneurysm and to augment the thrombosis that we'll, the aneurysm will experience once we place a flow diverter. And if you look very closely, you can see that there's an irregular pattern of blood coming through the flow diverter. So you have a jet of blood into the aneurysm, a, a jet, and let's see, let me get the laser pointer. You have a jet of blood here coming into the aneurysm, and an irregularity of blood flow here indicating thrombus. And if you wait a little longer, the jet is gone, but now you see a feathering pattern, very typical thrombus in a stent. So at this point, uh, it's a couple of options. We can let the vessel occlude and hope that there's enough collateral, but because this patient was intubated, we could not do a balloon test occlusion. We can't risk the fact that we can take the vessel down, and that's why we tried to spare the vessel with a stent and a flow diverter. So we gave a 2B, 3A inhibitor, Integralin, just the bolus, and you can see after the bolus, the blood flow appears to be improved. So now we have complete occlusion of the aneurysm with one coil and one flow diverter, and that jet that was seen here is no longer present. Here we are uh, in a follow-up angiogram at the end of the case showing 